So hello and welcome to the penultimate episode of our Lockdown Entertainment Series Volley Chat. We've been fortunate to have some top class players on so far. Today is no different as we're joined by IBB Polonia London opposite Marcus Nielsen. Now Marcus has played all over the world from his home country to the States, Qatar, Russia and France to name a few. Um, he's crown and glory perhaps being the Champions League win in 2013 with Lokomotiv Novo Serbis uh, when he was also named the competition's MVP and best scorer. Marcus, um, thank you for joining us. So good to chat to you. Um, how are you and whereabouts in the world are you joining us from? Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, back home right now in Sweden, uh, studying and doing my internship with school. So I'm keeping busy and also practicing with uh, with my local club here. Yeah, because sort of in normal circumstances, would you have been in England then training as well? Because I guess at the moment we're still in lockdown. So at this point, you know, you can only train with one other person from another house. So at the moment, you, you've gone back to Sweden then to keep the training, to keep going. Yeah, exactly. It's a good way to stay in shape because here, uh, fortunately, we can still practice. We can still play games. So uh, everything goes on pretty much normal here. So, yeah, that's the main reason. Cool. And so I wanted to start, if it's OK, then with with IBB Polonia London then. So that's that's how a lot of people in England would have. Uh, particularly recently, you know, been more familiar with your name and, and sort of seeing you on television and such. So do you mind telling us how you came to join the club? Because I hear it wasn't from the most, um, it wasn't the most usual or straightforward of, of moves. No, that's true. Uh, so uh, Phil Smith, uh, middle blocker in the, the team, he contacted me. I know him from, uh, he used to play in Sweden in a club uh, just in the city over from here and uh, we played against each other in a beach volley tournament if i remember correctly and got to know each other then and so he texted me and asked what i was doing if i was interested in uh, coming over and playing some champions league games and uh, yeah that's how it started <laughs> and so what were you, what were your first first thought when this message came through did have, had, more, had you heard of ibb polonia yeah because of because of Jiva, uh, because uh, they signed Jiva, they had Jiva. That was a huge uh, publicity thing for the club. And uh, if it wasn't for that, probably no, I wouldn't know about the the club. Well, they'd be delighted you said that to be honest, because that's the, you know that's exactly the kind of thing that Jiva brought to us. You know, give us that profile, give the club the profile in English volleyball. So um, I'm sure there'll be a few people at the club that'll be delighted that you've. you've <laughs> Um, and what was it then that convinced you to join? Was it just the Champions League or was it the, I guess, the bigger picture then, a, sort of a similar role that Jiva played as well? They're not just raising the profile internationally, but also in England. Yeah, uh, I think the Bartek uh, from the club, he, I talked to him and uh, he really spilled it out how, what the club's plan was and what they were doing and their project and it sounded really interesting and for me it was a way of helping the club getting some attention in media uh, domestically but also internationally and also the chance to play Champions League again. Um, I, I, I didn't feel like I'm not ready to go out there and uh, and do the whole journey all over again, but just to experience a few games here and there, it was perfect. It was a lot of fun. I loved it. And so it's not been, it was obviously the start was different, you know, the, the message from Phil that I introduced to the club, and it's not been the most normal circumstances either then, I guess, that your time with the club. Um, obviously, initially, I think when you joined, things were okay, but in the run-up to the, the first matches, restrictions started to become introduced and and it's not been the most straightforward journey. So have you have you managed to train with the squad in England yet? Because I know that you had a few um, trips abroad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it all started when I was going to go to uh, London for the first time. Uh, they had quarantine rules about the palace from Sweden. So then I was forced to go to Poland or forced. They made they found a, actually a great solution. That I went to Poland and I practiced with the Skra Belchatov for two weeks. And uh, from there on, I went back, or then I went to London and I joined the team. And I practiced with them normally for maybe a week or two weeks, something like that. And then we went to Italy uh, for the Champions League games. Yeah, been a bit of a, yeah, been a, bit of a, a strange introduction to the club. Um, and then, of oh, course, yeah. 
Now you mentioned then you, the, you went to Italy then for the, the Champions League matches. Um, the first one against you know you, the European giants, Trentino. How how were you feeling going into that match? Uh, I think we we had a good feeling in the group because we knew that all the pressure were, was on Trentino, and we could. It's always fun to play against good teams, you know. So uh, I think that the only thing that was worrying me before the game was if they were gonna underestimate us and just come play with their second or uh, juniors team or something like that but i was really happy to see that they played with their starting six almost throughout the game and they never showed that they underestimated us and uh, i really appreciated that and also the way we performed i'm really happy we went in we played our hearts out and I think we we did a great game considering all the circumstances. Yeah, definitely. It was it was great fun to watch in, in England. We could watch it on free to watch television, and I could absolutely tell that everyone was, you know that was playing that was on the on the court was there for an upset. They wanted to push it as far as possible and sort of see what 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 could be achieved. And yeah, it was it was a really sort of proud moment to watch that back. So um, yeah, it was it was great fun. And so then the. Closely followed on, it might have been the day after, might have been the day after that. Then you had the the second match then against um, OK OK Vojvodina, and we did you did you think then sort of coming out of that first match then with Trentino with the extra confidence? Did you think then you know we could we could actually get an upset here? I guess particularly as well as as the match went on in those first um, those first few sets. Yeah, definitely. I think we had uh, we came into that game with a. With high confidence and we felt good and I think if we had had the opportunity to practice a little bit more together and some of us were in a little bit better shape physically then maybe we would have won. I, I felt personally that I got really tired in the second game uh, at the end of the uh, match and yeah, that, that's what happens when you don't practice twice a day, like uh, the Serbs do. And uh, But I think we pushed them really hard. We took a set, and I think we should be really proud of what we uh, accomplished there. And obviously, you you know, you you say that you felt you got tired in that match, but you you know, you put on a fantastic performance. Um, I think with the highest score, or the highest, I think you were the highest score in the match, then not just from IBBs, but from from both teams. And obviously, you were named the MVP. Um, what you know, the, what's part of the plan for both those matches to to put a lot of the play through you in the game, you know, to sort of reap that advantage where we could, where they could. Uh, I don't know if it's, it was part of the plan, but uh, I think Heis, uh, our setter, he felt that I was a little bit on fire, and uh, uh, he he gave me the confidence to hit a lot of balls, and I appreciated that, but. Uh, I think we had a solid game plan, and uh, the opposite is normally a, a big part of of uh, the scoring game. So I think it's just natural the way it went. Yeah, and putting on the spot a little bit here from from my BB Polonia from the squad. Then were there any players that you were particularly impressed with? Then there players that really stood out that and um, you know that you were you were sort of glad that you had on your side. Yeah, but I, I think the whole team uh, really played on a high level. And, you know, Heis came in, he met us in Italy. We had never practiced with him before. We got one practice with him. That's really hard, especially as a setter, to, to find all the players without any practice together. I think he did a fantastic job. And also the British guys just not being used to the, the level of game that uh, we played. They stood up in a fantastic way, so I'm really proud of all of them. Yeah, definitely, and particularly when we compare it to, you know, last year was you know the first time that not only Polony but any English club had entered the Champions League and um, put on you know a lot of heart, a lot of performance against Mladen Zostagreb, um, but on 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 home and away we you know we lost on um, six sets in total. So you know even just to to to, to win this set and, and come close to winning the second set, it was you know a huge huge um, achievement and. A lot, you know, we look back on it with, with great pride. Not just, not just myself, not just volleyball England, but the the community as well. So it was, um, it was, it was great to watch. It was a great, great, and um, a great highlight. And what made it even more special, I think, as well for people in in England, was that at the time volleyball couldn't be played in England. So Polonia were the only ones playing matches, 
Um, so it made it even more special that we could all sort of rally around and watch the match back. And so next next step then, just so it's still in the CV Cup, but continuing this, you know, this absolute roller coaster of a of a season so far. Um, so unfortunately, the the first opponents had to withdraw from the competition. That was meant to be played then in the Czech Republic. Um, but the the plans have just been ironed out now, and it's it's going to be middle of December now. Into I think it's it's another side from Serbia. Is, is it okay, Nice? Okay, Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, we're going to play against them on the December fifteenth in France. Uh, it's going to be played as a as a small tournament. Um, so the first round, I think it. The round of 16, yes, that's I it. think it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, it's just going to be one game. Uh, if we win, then we move on to the quarterfinal, and that's going to be played two days later against another team still in uh, in France, in Montpellier. Yes, if it I'm is. Correct, yeah. 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 Um, and then if we win that game, then it's uh, next round in January, I think. So how are the? I mean, first of all, how are the preparations going for that match? I appreciate it's you know it's even stranger times now. Uh, for me, it's going good. You know, I can still go to the gym. I can practice with the uh, guys here in the club and uh, play games. So for me, it's not a big problem. For the rest of the guys, uh, they haven't practice for a while <laughs> i know they're gonna go to poland now for a preparation camp soon uh so hopefully they will get in shape hopefully they have practiced a little bit at home so they are not completely out of shape and uh then they're gonna have good practices in uh, poland so i'm sure uh they will come to france um in good shape and what are your thoughts on the game you know the, the opponents you're facing they're they're not going to be as or they're not They've not got the same record as uh, OK Vojvodina. They play in the same league as them. Um, Vojvodina, obviously, the, the Serbian champions. And I think they've had the, the title for the last few years, if not longer. Um, so you, you know, you're kind of thinking that they're maybe not going to be quite as you know as good. Do you think that yeah, this is this is the chance then for the upset? This is the chance to to, to make the mark on, on, on the CV Cup? I think we have a great chance. Yeah, definitely. Because we played a good game against uh, Vojvodina and uh, they are a couple of levels better than Nice in the way I understand it. So I think it's going to be a really tough game. Of course, we got, we're going to have to go in and play our hearts out once nice. again, as we have to do in every game. We will be the underdogs. But I think we have a really good shot at uh, doing something great. And so hopefully then that, that, that European campaign continues um, from your point of view, from ours, it's been great to watch and great entertainment for applying the flag for England. Um, but what, what is the what is your plan then from sort of Polonia? Is it the, is it the, just a one one year off? Um, have, you, have you thought beyond the season yet about what, what your sort of volleyball um, career is going to look like next? I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to be done with the university in June next year. And after that, I don't know, I guess I have to start growing up and maybe get a job or something. I, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't planned ahead that much, uh, but I'm, I'm almost 40. I'm uh, 38 right now, so I can't go on playing forever, but going over to London, playing some uh, Champions League games, for one, two months. That would be awesome if that would be possible to continue with at least one or two more seasons. But you never know. It's uh, First of all, we have to survive this pandemic and get that un under control. And and then I need to stay in shape. And, you know, there are so many variables. It's very difficult to say, but... Definitely. There's lots to continue. Yeah, definitely. There's lots to think about just now, I guess, never mind even six months or, or in a year's time. There's no knowing what, what the world will look like then. So, um, no, it would be good, be good to, to have you carried on, carried on and have you about still. So the what I want to talk about next, and if it's OK, is a, a sort of another opportunity um, that came up via a connection you had with a good friend and that introduced you to, to a project. So um, this one was the what began as the National Volleyball Association. 
and it's now kind of developed into what you're now attached to is the the VLA. So that's the is the Volleyball League of America. So I know it's been a bit stop start in the states about trying to establish a pro league, trying to get that kind of level of volleyball for for people to play in. And, you know, college volleyball is at a good level and it's really well known and we often talk about it in the country. And um, but yeah, the pro league has been a bit stop start. So would you be telling them a bit about how you were introduced then to the what, what started as the National Volleyball? Um, association and, and what the project then is all about. Right, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was back in 2017. Um, I didn't have a team at the moment and I saw that the, uh, they were going to do something over there. They were going to have an inauguration tournament in Vegas and uh, Lloyd Ball, who's a good friend of mine, uh, he was going to uh, bring a team there and play and um, uh, I didn't have anything to do, so I, I wrote him a message and I asked him if he needed an opposite. Uh, and he's like, yeah, sure, that would be awesome. And then uh, they flew me out there and uh, played the tournament and it was a fantastic uh, experience. It was so much fun and uh, there are so many talented players in America that you don't know of because they, they go to college, they play volleyball there and after, if they don't get a pro contract or if they are not in the... Uh, national team then they just disappear but they're still there and the level of the guys in that tournament was really high so it was a lot of fun and then after that I was hooked you know the guys in the team pineapple they're amazing guys and we have a lot of fun together and uh, I've been over there I don't know three or four times to play uh, different tournaments and uh, I was supposed to go this summer also but we all know what happened with the pandemic and um, they had to cancel the, the season and hopefully they will uh, restart next year and uh, hopefully I can join them for a couple of tournaments. And that's the, so they started then, sorry, I should say it's the, it was a launch tournament once that you were part of was the, the, what was the NVL, so that NVA, so that's the National Volleyball Association, but right. now your involvement with right. VLA, sorry, and, and the, the tournaments there. So what's the what's the kind of setup like? Do they get quite a nice um, sort of home support? Are so there good crowds? Um, do they get a lot of coverage in the media? It's, it's sort of fascinating looking at it from a from an English point of view because that's something that you know we one day really want to aspire to that kind of level. And it's interesting that you know they go through that struggle in the states and maybe what we can learn or what we might be experiencing then in in England. So yeah, what what kind of what does the what does the, the setup look like? Right. Yeah. So, so this new association, the VLA, uh, they have partnered up with uh, USA Volleyball, and so they play all their tournaments at the same spot and the same time as uh, huge junior tournaments. Okay. And they have they have a bunch of these enormous tournaments. I've seen some. I haven't played at one, but I've seen some pictures, and there are like thousands courts in one in one big complex and it's just full of kids playing volleyball games and so they managed to team up with uh, that association and uh, they will have all the tournaments at junior uh, tournaments so that's going to be fantastic because then they will have a lot of fans at the games and they will have live broadcasting and it's it's going to be awesome I think. So it's getting some good network coverage as well then. So it's sort of getting, you know, getting right. beyond the volleyball community as well, then trying to reach out and just the, the general American audience. So, um, OK, it's something to watch out. But I did see there's been some developments on, on one of the leagues and we sort of the launch of a women's league. So it's definitely something to, to keep an eye on from England and and see see how they get on then. So, um, yeah, you were saying you, you, you should have been involved with that. And this summer, um, is this the summer gone? Sorry, was this the summer coming up? 2020. Yeah, I was supposed to be there this this past summer, summer 2020, but it got cancelled. And then hopefully uh, they 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 had plans to start up a, a new season in I think March or something, and it's going to go through the summer of 2021. And hopefully I can join them uh, for a few tournaments. Then. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll, we'll follow your progress if, if you do make it over there. It'll be interesting to watch. Um, so moving on to the next segment, if it's okay, Mark, because I wanted to, to dig into a little bit of your expertise and knowledge then on sort of spiking technique in particular. Um, a lot of people would have would have seen you in, in performing then in, in the Champions League matches um, and they want to sort of maybe try to pick up on a few things there. Obviously, 
like we can't do a masterclass over Zoom. They're not going to become, you know, a pro, an expert, you know, within a few minutes. But if you could, if you could share a few insights, what would be kind of your your top three or four tips, top bits of knowledge that um, that you would share with other people? Uh, yeah, as as you mentioned, it's it's kind of difficult to show on camera, but I, I think the most important you need to think about is how you move your arms. I would say after that. After the backswing of the arms, when you when you start to get your arms up, it's really important to quickly open up your shoulder and really keeping it open to really load up and get a good good swing in. Uh, I would say that's the biggest technical thing to think about. And then it's just be, being behind the ball that helps so much because then you have the opportunity to uh see the block and that if you can't see the block then you have no idea if you're gonna hit line or if you're gonna hit cross so seeing the block is something that everyone should strive towards to being able to do and being able to do that is by being behind the ball never coming under the ball so you have to look up you need to be able to look forward and see both the ball and the block. And in that way, you can choose if you're going to hit cross or line. I think those two things are the most important. And what's, what's going through your mind then as well when, when the game is taking place, whether it's when you know you, your team's got the ball, when the opposition have got the ball, what kind of things are you thinking about then to you know, maybe get yourself in? Are you thinking, well, I guess you're thinking about your positioning then, about where the ball, the, the flight of it, where it's going to end up? And um, what other things are, are you thinking of just to 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 take it to take advantage and get into the best position? Yeah, it's it's all about the the play without the ball, you know, the preparations before you get the 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 set. If it's if you're coming off, if you have, if you just made a block, then it's really important that you get you get off the net and you get an approach so that you you're ready. If the setter sets you that you're ready to get your normal approach and being able to uh, to hit good, because that's a really common problem during a rally. If you if you jump in block, then you see a lot of players who don't really come off the net, and then they can't hit as hard or they can't jump as high as they need to, and then they get blocked. So just coming off the net, just think about the basics, and just being aggressive, just hit that ball. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's an attitude game. You know, you ha you need to be mentally really aggressive. And so yeah, I think just be be aggressive. Be aggressive. <laughs> I like that. Be aggressive. Don't be the nice guy. Mm -hmm. And what what do you think has helped? You obviously you, your career has taken different routes and different places and such. Is there any part that you think's particularly helped? I know that. For example, like in an early age, you you moved to sort of a, a there was a volleyball centre, I believe, then in Sweden that you spent a lot of time at, and that helped sort of your development. And then, of course, you you know you played all over the world across different continents. And um, is there a particular time, and I guess this is really personal to you, then not not for other people, then that you felt has has, has helped you as not just your spiking technique, but your overall volleyball development out of interest. I would say my first year abroad. Um, I played. I played one season in Sweden before I left. So I was 19. I was going to turn 20 when I left Sweden, and I went to the south of Italy to an A2 uh, club uh, as a backup opposite, uh, just to get the experience and get the opportunity to play outside of Sweden. And uh, I ended up with a coach who really believed in me. And we worked out so much. First first of all, the, the team practiced like crazy amounts. I've never before or after that season practiced as much as I did that season. Um, and then on top of that, the coach forced me to come practice individually either before or after every and he he pushed me a lot he developed me a lot and i think because of him i ended up where where i did because he really put some uh working morale in me 
uh, that was my first year abroad. I didn't know nothing. I was like a, I don't know, a sponge who just sucked in all the impressions, all the information, everything. And, and he was like, okay, this is how you practice. And that's, that's how he shaped me. And after that, I was like, okay, so you practice really hard. And that's when success counts. And so, so I have a hint to thank for a lot, I think. What was his name? Avengers. Yeah, I hope you wouldn't ask that. I have no idea about names. Uh -oh. I forget people's names so fast. <laughs> it takes me forever to learn a new person's name. So I'm sorry. I'm just blanking right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dig it out later on. I'll, I'll try and do some digging and find it out for you. It'll be, be interesting to no, no, not for not for me. You know what happened next, but just sort of the you know I guess the the part that he played then in your development i'm sure he would be intrigued as well to see what he did as the coach you know the belief the confidence he put into you that you, know, you would almost put that down to yeah. the most important parts of your development because of what that, that did for you so um lesson for maybe other coaches as well or people or players that are at clubs or and training and um, squads or something where they're, they're not getting that belief and um, that, that they need to maybe look look elsewhere to get that so okay no that's interesting that's interesting though. and so you, you said obviously you've you played in many many different clubs is there a, a particular time a period a, a club that that you sort of look back on most fondly i would have to say uh, my three years in uh, heracles in greece okay because because of everything because of uh, volleyball was at a really high level during that time you had Dante in uh, Panathinaikos, Marcelinho. You had these amazing players in the Greek league, uh, and we had we had a lot of success. I won two championships. Uh, we played the final of Champions League, uh, and also the fans in Greece are amazing. I've never experienced something like that. They are they are crazy, <laughs> but it's so amazing they help you they give you so much adrenaline you play so much better and just playing in front of a packed stadium is it's the best feeling so i would have to say the three years in uh, in greece that also answers my next question about i guess the best crowd you played in front of because i have seen some pictures and i think it's probably from that time then where there's a, there's been a, an invasion of the court after a match and the players are all around you and i think someone's hoisted you up and i think you're on someone's shoulder um, you, you've been beaming from, from wow. ear to ear with this huge smile, um, but you can sort of <laughs> see that you're, you know, you're all having such a good time. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a good community, good family to be a part of that. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. And, it's well, as long as you play well. If you play bad, then it's not as nice. <laughs> but I was fortunate enough to have a, a great success in Greece, so my experience is amazing. Oh, wicked. And I think you touched on it very briefly then before then, but um, you've also played a bit of beach volleyball. Whereabouts have you played beach and, and sort of to what to what level? I've just played beach volley during the summers in Sweden. Um, just to keep in, it's a good uh, good way to keep, keep in shape during the off season, especially since the national program of Sweden normally was about a month long, maybe a month and a half. And then I still had a, uh, a long time before it was time to go away or fly away for a new indoor season. So then beach volleyball helped me to keep in shape. And I actually won two Swedish championships during uh, those years. So it was fun, but I never went higher. I never went internationally or tried something like that. Well, this, you know, there's still time now. You talk about those summers that could be a, that could be one of your next opportunities. Um, there's also as well, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, these next few months change, and you know, we can welcome you back, and we can hopefully, as this is based on a lot of things, and um, you know, get one of those home fixtures. And, and get... oh, sorry, Mark, is he still there? Oh, I can hear you now. So what I was saying, sorry, is hopefully we can get you into England, and you might be able to get onto the um, the UK circuit, or we have a UK beach tour, um, but it's maybe maybe something to to interest you. Sorry, now the connection was really bad. I didn't hear nothing what you just said. <laughs> it's no, I was basically, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. 
it's no worries. I was rambling about beach volleyball in, in England, um, but I was basically saying we have a, a circuit here and um, if everything goes well, it'll be nice to welcome you onto that if you get the chance to be be interesting. You be you might be able to partner up with Phil Smith again. Right, yeah, I think uh, he's uh, he's pretty heavily involved in that tour, I think. So yeah, he just needs to invite me. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we talked about teams, and we talked about you know your favorite team and the, the crowd and the memories there. Do you have any favorite players that you played alongside, whether it's um, and you know uh, domestic, well not domestically, but club level or international level with Sweden? Uh, Swedish players or just uh, players in general? Yeah, in general, you know, whether it is at club level or it was international level. Any favourite players that you played with uh, and why? Or I think I would have to say uh, a Belgium setter named Frank de Pestela. Uh, okay. We played together in uh, in Greece. Uh, we we had a he's a great setter, you know, high level. Uh, but we also had a lot of fun off course. So I I think he has a special place in my heart for sure. So and we stayed in, in touch afterwards and like that. So uh, yeah, definitely Frank. Do you, did you did you did the two of you have a good connection on court? Is it maybe sort of? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. So that probably helped. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's all talk about the volleyball side then, you know, a bit about your, your career so far, clubs and players. Um, but you're also studying at the moment. You're studying biomedicine, I believe I'm right in saying. Um, that, how long have you been studying and, and where are you you're hoping that takes you? Uh, I'm doing my third year right now, so it's my final year. Um, I'm not sure where it will take me. Uh, after these three years... I still need to study one more year in order to uh, become what is called a biomedical analyst. And if, if I do that, then, then I will be able to, uh, to work in, for example, hospital uh, laboratories to analyze uh, body fluids and blood and uh, all kinds of cool things. <laughs> uh, also the opportunity to uh, work in, uh, in biotech companies, uh, so that's that's probably my aim. Because after these three years, I will become just a. I'm not even sure what it's called, but there is no there is no work for um, after these three years. So I need to do a fourth year, kind of to specialize in something, and then I uh, become a biomedical analyst. And so that's probably what's going to happen. I think. So does that does that degree offer you any routes back into sport? Are there any sort of avenues there, or is it a totally different non-sporting route that you're looking to go down? Uh, I do have the opportunity to choose the sports way, but I'm not sure I will do that because I've done sport my whole life, and actually the reason why I started this uh, uh, this program from the beginning was the sports side of it. But so during these three years, I've been introduced to the the lab part of this program also. And I find that really interesting. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm actually doing an internship right now in that field. I'm uh, at the hospital, the local hospital here at the uh, chemical laboratory. And uh, it's so interesting and it's something new. You know, I've done sports my whole life and I will probably always keep doing something with sports being involved in the volleyball club here or something but uh, at the moment it's it's really fascinating and i like this lab work yeah no it sounds like a fascinating new chapter and like you said it's it's, it's something totally different um is it something that you've always had in the back of your mind like that interest in science and what no so it's come out of nowhere <laughs> it came out of nowhere i had no idea that this field basically existed before starting this program at, at the university and then I was introduced to it and I was like hmm, that sounds like fun so and then I, <laughs> then that's yeah well that's cool so we're totally different we're totally yeah. totally different and oh. um, well Marcus it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and um, best of luck next month with the, the CV Cup 
we'll be we'll be cheering you on from home and um, yeah hope the preparation goes well for that and and the match even better for the matches awesome thank you so much for having me